Howdy friends, my name is Wesley. I started a YouTube channel to show what my life is like as a band instrument repair technician. Thanks for stopping by. It's been pretty busy a few days here at the shop, driving all around. I've got my mobile shop up and running and I went to some band camps. Yes, band camp is back. We're back baby, it's good. And got a bunch of projects going on here in the shop, really blessed. Let me show you what we got going on over here. This is going to be a fun project. What we've got here is a trombone in kit form. <laughs> Tenon and the receiver are stuck together. So that's what we'll be dealing with on this instrument when it's time. That's not what we're doing today though. So our operation at hand today is this beautiful flute. And I've been straightening some keys on it, getting everything set. It came in for this nice clean and polish. And by looking at it with the naked eye, everything was looking pretty good. And then I started, it wasn't playing the way that I felt that this nice of an instrument should play. And so I started to take a deep dive. This section was pretty good. The double G key, this is going to reveal some things here and then down here. Let's zoom in and take a closer look. This is that Faris sneaky light that I was telling y'all about. So the same way I do my saxophones, no pressure. This looks great. And I can see that I'll be Got a little bit more to do here. This one is closing a little bit before here. And I'll do my final regulation after I pull apart, after I clean it and put it back together. But we're going to discuss this double G and it's inconsistent. The tone hole it's not the pad, it's the tone hole is actually inconsistent. And I know it's really hard to, to pick and see this on camera. And then as we go down here, this is one that I've done and reassembled. So you see on this F sharp key, as we bring it down ever so, boom. And that's what we want. Boom. And you can notice as you look from the front to the back of the tone hole, it's straight and it's all level. Now, this, see here, let me, when we rotate this, there's a high spot on the front side of the G and then in the back, there's a dip and that shouldn't be there. Okay. And then our second problem, when we come down here, these are, these are okay. They're not, they're not super stellar, but they're okay. But then check this out. On the D key, the pad cup itself is bent pretty severe. When you dive into it and you take a deep dive, this is what you see. So I'm going to show you a couple of tools today to take care of this. This tool is a Freeze tool. This is called the E11 flute pad cup leveling set and you can see how it's got a cutaway and a ridge and there's three different sizes of these they have this cork on the top so as not to mar the tops of the keys so you'll never know that you were working and how this works these grooves will set and grab under the, the pad, the pad cup. 
and you find the one that's the appropriate size and it grabs it and this is all finesse so sometimes you beat on stuff but this kind of a tool and this kind of an operation it's it's all about finesse and you find the one that fits the size that you need it to be so we're going to take the tool it's going to slide over and it will you can see that it stays on for itself small flexing motions you don't want to force anything you want to put any dead pressure on anything small flexing motions a little bit goes a long way keep that in mind okay and then let's check it zoomed in up close mm. We want that pad cup to come just, we want this side to come down just a little bit more. So we reset it. Very light. A little bit goes a long way. I can see that I need to do it a little bit more. zoom you in and get you some of that so you can see the flexing of this key ever so lightly and that looks pretty good let's zoom it back in for you and I'm going to use my grid lines I know, and then bring this close. Yeah. Just like that. There's no scarring. So that's a cool, it's not something that you use very often, but man, when you need it, you need it. The E11 pad leveling tool. Pretty cool. Now I'm going to disassemble these uh, the top section and down to the double G key so that we can address the this lower tone hole not not being level hang tight with me let's go ahead and finish tearing this down So we've got our instrument disassembled and this is that lower G, the lower of the double G tone holes. I've turned this on the lathe so that it's level on this side. And so what I want to do is just like on a saxophone, I want to spy with my little eye. And you see all the inconsistencies. And I don't like to use a file on a rounded over tone hole. I'm, I'm just, I'm not a fan of that. I know people do it, but I'm not a fanboy on that. But I do like this tool. It is a super fine diamond work area up here. It's very much of a takeoff of the saxophone leveling tools. But this one is made for flute and it's got different sized the little kit comes with different size pilots that screw into this. To find your pilot size, find the one that closest matches and fits inside your tone hole. 
so that's this one you want that as close as you can get we don't want any kind of real wiggle room thread this on tighten it up and once again what we are talking about is finesse because that is a rolled tone hole and you can easily go through it well not easily but if you work at it you can go through it go through it you would think of this more as dressing the tone hole and just getting little imperfections out of it and really when you zoom in and look at it you're creating a nice little seat and look at how much better it's still a little bit but it's so much better you want to keep your pressure consistent and even I'm using this hand as a vise to hold it because this is flexible I don't want to put it against the hard surface of my bench slow and steady you're not trying to get it all in one turn that's looking really nice and consistent we got a little bit of inconsistency there we can get a little bit more let's make a couple more passes but I'm really pretty happy with this everybody's looking for me today <laughs> you ever have days like that my forefinger I'm using is the as the pilot my other fingers are rotating you want to be careful you don't want to do this or you don't want to do this you don't want to be forward or back you want to make sure that you were staying vertical it looks like a nice seat all the way around nice high polish let's grab our checker all right I'm pretty happy with that you remember what it was before look at that that's the way those are supposed to do and see if my microphone can pick it up that pop that pop that I'm always talking about I'm listening for it on every instrument awesome this horn is going to be great well from here I'm going to get this key back off and then we're going to chemical flush and polish the body and polish the keys as well as I can with the, keeping these pads and do the rest of the play condition repairs. This horn is going to play like I know it should, how I can hear it in my head. I know that our customer is just going to be super thrilled when she gets to pick it up uh, tomorrow. When you're working with flutes, woodwinds, clarinets, anything like this, be delicate finesse uh, is the name of the game these same hands some days we're beating brass and we're just beating it into submission whose will is stronger <laughs> you or the tuba and then there are days like this where you relax use your fingers and it's all about the finesse approach doing these light little things these instruments are so delicate you take great care to make sure you do the proper job to them. And thanks to Faree's Tools, who makes these great items that allow us to work on the finesse and make these horns play just incredible. I'll leave part numbers in the description and a link to the website. 
Well, all right, thanks for watching today. I hope you picked up some tips and techniques on how to take your work to the next level, how to get some real finesse stuff done. Finesse in the flute, that's a saying all to itself, isn't it? All right, thanks for stopping by today. My name is Wesley, signing out.